We're doing a double speed. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, except them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. A hundred years passed, and my brother and I discovered the new Avatar, an airbender named Aang. And although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anybody. Anybody. But I believe Aang saved the world. Damn it, I was so close. Now I'm stuck talking like this at this speed. <laughs> my boys, the Fred Flintstone train guys. I can't believe we finally made it to Ba Sing Se in one piece. Yeah, it took a lot. Don't worry, Aang. We'll find Appa. Where could someone possibly hide him? Wow. There's something really amazing about these old city walls. The Great Wall is one thing, but if you go to some cities in China, like my girlfriend and I went to Xi'an, in the old part of town they'll have the city walls still intact. It's a really special experience to stand on the wall and look down at the city and realize that at one point those walls were the defense for all the people in there. It's a cool feeling. Just a bunch of walls and rules. You'll get sick of it in a couple of days. That has a lot of impact from Toph, who just escaped a life of rules, but she was contained in like this tiny compound. I'm coming for you, buddy. He's here. I can feel it. Hmm. In the last episode, Aang mentioned that the monks didn't believe in hope because hope is an illusion, that it doesn't get you anywhere. But thinking about it more, I think there's a very strong tie between hope and action. Action requires hope. And I think that's why it resonated so strongly with me in the last episode when Aang decided he was going to do something about it. He needed the hope in order to get to that action. The action is key. I've noticed in myself a lot of times when I get stuck with a problem, I tend to try to think myself out of it. That's my first instinct is I just got to think this through. But the problem is it's kind of like building a house on sand because if your mind is already in a bad place and you're going downwards, then it's going to be very difficult to build something intact unless you've done a lot of work on that in the past or unless you really have a strong foundation that you've, you've built before. And so the way out of that is not to sit there ruminating on how there's no hope and everything's futile but to actually take action. And in order to take that action, you do need to have some kind of hope. It's just so much more admirable to see Aang standing here in Ba Sing Se, blowing that whistle and saying, I'm gonna find him. I'm already creeped out. We need to talk to the king about the war. It's important. You're in Ba Sing Se now. Everyone is safe here. Mm, I've been thinking about this too. I think it's really easy when you are living in relative prosperity to forget that that's not the default state of humanity that this is pretty new we're so quick to tear things down and tear things apart and be so negative on the world and our viewpoint of the state of things that we miss just how good things are and how much better things seem to be getting in certain objective ways there are two branches from this point that, I, that i've been thinking about one is that there are certain groups that have an agenda to keep people thinking that things are not prosperous because perhaps they want to tear things down and build them up in a way that benefits their group or them as individuals maybe the other takeaway from that is i think that we're quick to think we can improve things and i think that improvement is something we should always think about but i think that you also have to look the other way at what got us here and you have to hold certain things sacred how does this connect to avatar if this woman is any indication of the way that the boss boss saying say citizens think they think that the safety they have experienced is just a default state of their city it's like an intrinsic quality of bossing say and therefore they don't see the risk of how they could be putting it in jeopardy by their by their inattention and i think that's a that's true of a lot of societies if you are comfortable you tend to lose your edge there's this famous idea that difficult times create strong people strong people create prosperous times Prosperous times create weak people and weak people create bad times in this ever-flowing cycle. Sometimes I worry that we are now in that cycle where we are so prosperous we're not actually aware of the, what the real threats are. And instead we easily turn on each other because we have the luxury to do so. Whereas for hundreds of thousands of years we were either battling the natural elements or other warring tribes. No matter what your beliefs are, it can be good to take stock. In, in what you have and not take what you have for granted because it can be gone in the blink of an eye. And that's how it's been for most of human history. And on that note, I'm gonna say that Ba Sing Se is gonna go down. For sure, because just the fact that they put that in there and she said that Ba Sing Se will never be breached, it's gonna be breached. It's like Jurassic Park with the- Life uh, finds a way. And you can basically time these things to when everyone says nothing can go wrong. I just want a new place to look nice in case someone brings home a lady friend. Let's be real. Uncle Iroh is the one who's most likely to bring home a lady friend. That lady friend will not be attractive. Judging by the ticket incident. But he will bring home a lady. Who's this? Oh, it's Jet. Look at them. Firebenders living right under everyone's nose. I thought we were starting over here. When I get the evidence I need, I'll report them to the police and let them handle it, okay? What a... 
What? That is not what I expected from Jet. I didn't expect him to be a snitch. Secondly, why is nobody asking Longshot for his opinion? This tea is nothing more than hot leaf juice. Uncle, that's what all tea is. Yeah, I meant to say. What are, you, what are you expecting? How could a member of my own family say something so horrible? <laughs> He's consistently mad about tea. Every man, no matter how wise, has their Achilles heel. Your request for an audience with the Earth King is being processed and should be put through in about a month. Okay, so the bureaucracy of the fairy lady was not an isolated incident. It's part of the culture of Ba Sing Se. I'll be happy to escort you anywhere you'd like to go. To leave you alone would make me a bad host. Seems like they're spying on them a little bit. There's something really creepy about this lady. Something else is going on here. Where's the black market? Who runs it? Uh... Mm-hmm. That would be illegal. What are you hiding? And which of your professors could we ask about the war with the Fire Nation? Uh... What is this weird propaganda machine they got running here? I have to get to class. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh at that, but... Uh, nerd. What's going on with the city? Why yeah. is everyone here so scared to talk about the war? Yeah. I don't want to get into trouble. The heck is going on? I'm sick of tea. Sick of tea? <laughs> That's like being sick of breathing. No offense to you simple country folk. But a real society Burn. crowd would spot you a mile away. I learned proper society behavior and chose to leave it. And frankly, mm. it's a little too late. You could teach us! Oh my god, that sounds hilarious. This is quickly turning into one of those things I didn't know I wanted until I wanted it so badly. Like the fortune teller episode. I'm excited for tough etiquette class. Good evening, Mr. Soccer Water Tribe. Avatar, eh? How you do go on? Seems pretty good to me. <laughs> I saw that coming. We think you're becoming obsessed with this. Jet, you've got to stop this. Yeah, also it's like, why does it mean so much to him? I mean, I understand that he had, he said trauma because of the Fire Nation, but it's not just a matter of fighting a war practically or self-defense or anything like that. This is just vengeance out of extreme bitterness. He's trying to even the score in his own mind, but the lie there is that that will do anything for him. It won't help him at all. He'll still have all the same pain. And in fact, he might have even more pain when he realizes what he's done. These two men are firebenders. Oh yeah, the weird meat hook things. I saw the old man eating his tea. He works in a tea shop. <laughs> he's a firebender. You want to show? Oh yeah, he's a swordsman. That's not going to work out. Oh yeah, but Jet's actually a good fighter. Zuko fighting theme again. No entry without an invitation. Step out of line, please. Ooh, how embarrassing. That hurts my noble pride. Do you think you could help us? I am honored. <laughs> Classy. <laughs> oh, it's like a legit bear. All the good stuff. I'm a cultural minister to the king. I'm Kwame, and this is Dom. <laughs> Hua Mei, like maybe reverse would be Mei Hua, beautiful flower. Dung is an actual name, like Dung Xiaoping. I guess it's a joke about Dung's meaning in English. Don't worry, as your escort, it would be dishonorable to abandon you ladies without finding your family first. He's the cultural minister, so that if I know anything about Asia, <laughs> he's probably the one in charge of the propaganda. You must be getting tired of using those swords. Oops. Couldn't contain it. Now I'm reversing my stance and I feel like they're gonna be best of friends. I have had one great friendship start with a physical altercation. Sometimes people who clash initially make great friends because one of the biggest reasons you might clash is because you're similar and you see yourself in the other person and it's annoying. <laughs> but then once you get over that feeling of like vulnerability and exposure, you have a great ally because you have someone who is on the same page. You can think alike in some ways. What are you doing here? You have to leave immediately or we'll all be in terrible trouble. Uh, oh, sorry. No, don't shout. Oh my God, they're so bad at blending in. Always. I didn't know the Avatar would be here. You just cost that lady her life. That's awesome. This crazy kid attacked the finest tea maker in the city. Oh, that's very sweet. <laughs> Oh. You have to believe me. That's what I mean by unstable. He's just lost all touch with what matters in reality. And if he keeps up like this, he's going to keep going in circles because now he's going to be even more bitter and hateful. He's blind to what's going wrong in his thought process and in his feelings. He's just sinking deeper and deeper into his emotions until the anger consumes him. Now he hates the Fire Nation. Now he hates the police. Now he hates the people who turned on him in the tea shop. It's so easy to get bitter when you're on that path and want to see everything burn. It is the strict policy of Ba Sing Se that the war not be mentioned within the walls. Ba Sing Se remains a peaceful, orderly utopia. Wow. 
I understand you've been looking for your bison. It would be quite a shame if you were not able to complete your quest. You blackmailing me? Mother... What happened to Judy? I'm Judy. Oh no, I was right. <laughs> oh, creepy. It's interesting that this is modeled after China because there, there is a informational asymmetry, let's call it there, where Chinese people can't easily access the broader internet and simultaneously the media there is, I wouldn't say it's controlled by the government, but the government has veto power on it and has certain agencies that monitor it. So there are narratives that form amongst the population that serve the people in power and, and kind of hide certain uncomfortable truths about the outside. So that's a really interesting parallel. I wonder if that's coincidental. But let me not think about China. I think there's something to the idea of information being used as a tool for someone else's agenda. I think that if you look at any political side, there are narratives that form and the narratives are almost always going to be really just hyper simplified versions of what's actually going on because the truth is going to be incredibly complicated and as someone who is publishing information you have an incentive one to give a clear message and two to make that mo that message emotionally provocative because that drives sales and also helps rally people to your cause, whatever that might be. We live in a complex world, obviously, and it's impossible for us to be good at everything and know about everything. I mean, most people aren't even experts at one thing, let alone multiple things, let alone everything. So it becomes difficult to navigate life when you're forced to accept the majority of things without much investigation, just out of time limitations and convenience. But I think one question that can be asked that will maybe help illuminate things in a, in a useful way is who is behind this message and what are they trying to get me to do? I think a lot of the time with certain messages, especially political messages, it's either to preserve the power of someone right now or to help someone else gain power in the future. And they're trying to get into your head and your heart emotionally in order to drive action that may or may not help you as an individual, but rather it helps this person or this small group of people. Everything I've ever dived into deeply has always been incredibly more layered and nuanced than I ever imagined. There's something called the Dunning-Kruger effect, which is the idea that if you're really a beginner at something, you tend to overestimate your ability in that thing. So that explains like people who go on American Idol, even though they're terrible singers. But then people who are really adept at something often tend to undervalue their abilities because they've gotten to the point in that skill where they can see the full range of skill levels and they realize, wow, there's so much to learn and they feel kind of low on that ability. One way most of us suffer from the Dunning-Kruger effect is thinking we understand the workings of the world and who's behind things and what the actual motivation for things are. And then if the solutions they propose actually will even help those things. It's just so endlessly complicated. I think the limitation to thinking in the way I just described is that you can sometimes be paralyzed with inaction because how can you trust anything? And I think for me, the answer to that is it comes down to focusing on myself as an individual and my small community around me. And I think that that's maybe not going to be enough, but I don't think that is going to do any harm because I can try to take care of myself try to be a responsible person and try to look out for my friends and family as best I can. I'm not going to hurt anybody by doing that. And you can make the argument that maybe, okay, well then you're turning a blind eye to bigger issues and maybe you have a responsibility to step up. And I do sympathize with that thought, but I think that if I have to prioritize, I'm going to prioritize myself first over larger issues that are kind of adopted as a group and passed along to me as something that I must adopt just because that's the way the group is going. Wow, that was a lot. So coming back to Avatar, <laughs> there are people who are clearly benefiting from this system. And the war is happening. I mean, that's a fact. They're extra vulnerable right now because they're not thinking about it. This might be a standalone episode because there's just so much in here. If so, I'll see you for the next one, which I'm going to watch right now, but not post right now.